In this learning outcome, we're going to look at what positive accounting theory is and how it came to be developed. So you need to be aware that when we look at positive accounting theory, there's actually three levels of development before we come to the precise theory that we know as positive accounting theory or just PAT for short. So at the first level, there are all positive or positive, positivist theories. Uh, this is a branch of theorizing that values objective, value-free empirical research. And it's what we refer to as the scientific method. And advocates for this method um, tend to believe that this is the only kind of valid theorizing. I would disagree with that, but many people do find value in this form of theorizing. And even though I disagree that that's the only valid form of theorizing, it certainly has a lot of value and it's contributed a lot to the development of accounting research. So that's the first level. Positive or positivist theory is the first level that we want to look at. The second level is positive accounting theory in general. So this is simply that branch of accounting theory that uses the positivist method. And there's a number of theories uh, that invoke the positivist method. But the third level is a specific theory and notice the capitalist capitalizations here, positive accounting theory, PAT or PAT for short. This is a specific theory uh, within the positive accounting theory branch. So be aware of those three levels, please. There's the positive theory in general, there's positive accounting theory in general, and then there is positive accounting theory, the specific theory that resides within positive accounting theory in general. So a definition of uh, PAT, so it's concerned with explaining accounting practice uh, by predicting which firms will and which firms will not use a particular accounting practice. So this is a, kind of, a different kind of accounting theory to what we've encountered in the past. Up to this point, we've normally been concerned with normative theory. Now, PAT is really a, a radical change from that. With PAT, we are we're not concerned about what should be done or what co constitutes best practice or what constitutes ethical practice. PAT is concerned about trying to explain and predict what's actually happening out there in accounting. So PAT really comes, of, comes to us from two important foundations. First of all is the economic theory of the efficient markets hypothesis or EMH, and it also draws an awful lot from agency theory. Uh, it was really uh, presented to us by Watson Zimmerman. Um, they wrote a number of articles, but the first appears to be around about 1978. And they really um, reacted against the lack of um, what they considered the superior theorizing the scientific method within accounting research. And so they looked to bring this theory uh, to press to, as they saw it, to really stiffen up uh, accounting theory. One of the first things it brings to us, because it's based in scientific method, is that it's formed on hypothesis. So hypothesis forming means that you come to a, you, you make a prediction about what will happen in a given scenario, and then you test that prediction. Efficient market hypothesis uh, from economics is really based on the assumption that the capital markets uh, will react uh, in, a, in an efficient and unbiased manner to publicly available information. So Ball and Brown in 68 used this to determine uh, what happens after unexpected earnings announcements. Uh, and they concluded that the capital markets tend to behave as expected 
and that abnormal returns will come to equal the actual rate of return less, less the expected rate of return. So if there are, the expected rate of return is what the market would reward you with if your accounting information or accounting announcements are in line with what the market expects. If you announce something that is spectacularly good and the market hadn't anticipated that, then you would expect the share price uh, to rise. On the other hand, if you announce something that was spectacularly bad, then the, the share price you would expect to fall. So these are what you would call abnormal returns, either positive or negative returns. On the other hand, if you made an, an accounting announcement that was spectacularly good, but the market had already anticipated it, there may be little or no change in the share price. Now, agency theory, it's been around for a long time, uh, and it's really a theory of how principals in a company, namely the owners, the shareholders, and their board of directors, and their aid managers or agents behave towards each other. Uh, it's a predictive form of theory, and it's based on the assumption that all actors, meaning the principals and agents, can be relied on to act in their own self-interest. So that's a very important tenet in agency theory. Everybody and everybody, not just the accountant, not just the manager, not just the board of directors, not just the shareholders, but everyone will act in their own self-interest. So once you make that assumption, then um, it's possible to start predicting how people would behave in certain situations. And how it comes to relate to accounting, uh, positive accounting theory uh, suggests that managers and their accountants will adopt accounting practices and accounting disclosures that will suit their own interests. And so this is how it interacts then between accounting, agency theory and efficient markets. Because if uh, managers, for example, are rewarded by expected rise in share prices, uh, they might receive a bonus, for example, then you'd expect them to adopt accounting practices that maximise the chance of the share price increasing. But wait, you might say, don't the accounting standards dictate what you can and can't do? Not completely. So even by following the accounting standards, accountants and their managers have a lot of discretion to follow professional judgment, particularly in um, the valuation of assets and liabilities. And when it comes to financial reports, remember that the accounting standards prescribe a minimum standard, not a maximum. So, com uh, complying with the accounting standards sets a floor, not a ceiling. So you, the, if you comply with the accounting standards and your financial reports will have a minimum component, beyond that you're free to disclose whatever you think um, benefits the company and under agency theory or PAT, what will benefit the individual managers and accountants. So Pat tells us that accountants and managers will select accounting practices and voluntarily dis disclose information on the basis of what it means for them. So the challenge then is for the principals, the owners of the company and their boards of directors, uh, to encourage the agents to make decisions in the interests of the company and not just for themselves. So that's really going to be uh, the basis for the next discussion when we look at the components of PAP, and I hope you can join us for that.